Hello everyone, today's video is how to replace or upgrade the hard disk in this Toshiba Satellite L50D-B-1466 uh, otherwise known as part number PSKUQE-01100UEN um, So this one's a, a red top and it's an AMD A8 processor. I think this one's either got six or maybe eight gigs of RAM. Ignore the screws over here. They're from a different machine that I've taken apart um, and is sitting on the healing bench waiting for me to do more stuff to. So first, I'm gonna undo these two screws up here by the battery and, uh, and we'll go from there probably It'll either release the battery, or more likely it won't release the battery, but why not start with those screws anyway? And if you've seen any of my videos, you can't quite, oh, you can just about see it. I try and put the screws in the in a little layout of where they've come from the machine. So when I go to put it back together, if there are slightly different screws from different locations, um, they all go back in the same place. Okay, that does undo the battery. So that's those two screws undone. I'm going to undo all the remaining ones around the edge and also this one in the middle which will release the DVD drive. Let's do the one in the middle now. Oh no, the magnetism on my screwdriver is waning. Let's see if I can fix that. For doing computers like this, having a magnetic screwdriver really does help get the screws out from within machines. So uh, I highly recommend, there we go, having uh, a magnetized screwdriver or as long as your material, your screwdriver is made out of and you've got a fairly strong magnet, you can do what I just did, which is rub a uh, magnet, a strong magnet over the shaft of the screwdriver and it will make it magnetic. All right, now we've undone that one, the DVD drive can come out. Now let's move that out of the way for the moment. I have to say we've had a spell of really cold weather in the UK and uh, my current situation is I'm not using this uh, office very often because it's expensive to heat. And so it's turned into more like a warehouse full of junk because uh, I've had to make space elsewhere. So at the moment I'm doing this repair whilst straddling really old computers and old SAN and uh, a drum of network cable. So it's not really the, the most ideal situation, but. I just have to live with that. Okay, so that's all the screws that we can see are undone. I will get a spudger. I do a balancing act across the office to get a spudger. And uh, see, it's probably gonna be easier to first off show you and also for me to see if I uh, partially open that. That was fairly easy. So it, it goes down, you don't go down the keyboard side, so you're not like that. It was on the underside. There's a slight gap between the palm rest and the panel on the bottom that we've just undone. And just need to gently go around the edges, putting a bit of pressure on it until it unclips. And there we go, that's uh, undone that underside panel. Super easy. We have RAM, and in fact it's got one RAM slot that isn't even used. Uh, this one has eight gigs of RAM in a single stick. Just wondering whether I've got a suitable amount. No, that's definitely not the same type of RAM that would go into it. Um, we have the hard disk here, which I'm going to replace with an SSD. CPU cooler fan. We have one speaker here, one speaker here. 
we've got the processor here and before anyone asks or hopefully you watch this video before commenting that processor is solder mounted or BGA array soldered onto the board uh, and cannot be swapped um, so that's probably the CPU that one's almost certainly the GPU or maybe the other way around um, what other things do we have CD-ROM drive connector Wi-Fi card is under this ribbon here you have a ribbon going over to the network socket and the uh, USB socket. Power jack is there, and it's nice to see the power jack is a, a module that is on a fly lead. So if you smash the power jack, that's quite easy to replace as well. Uh, you just buy a, a power jack with its uh, fly lead, unplug it, pop it out over here, put the new one in, plug it in, and you're done. Got some dust. Um, that's probably the power button, I would have thought, there. That's the SD card slot, um, which will be on the front of the, the case that you put an SD card into. Back to what I'm supposed to be doing, though. We have the hard disk. So it looks like it's not screwed in. It's just, you just lift it up this side, which is the inner side of the laptop, bearing in mind that it's still connected to the serial ATA connector over here, and then just wiggle that out and there we go, it's undone. My aim here is to take the hard disk that we have here, which is slow and old and uh, bad, and replace it with this SSD here. This one's already got an operating system on it and some data on it actually, but if you're doing a conversion yourself and you want to keep all of your data, then Macrium Reflect used to be a free bit of software for home use. Uh, more recently, when I go to the website, it seems to not offer uh, Macrium Reflect for free, but more a uh, demo or a trial version for home use, which I think you can probably still use to clone your data if you need. Um, it's a bit of a shame that it seems like they've uh, walked backwards on their free, entirely free for home use version. So what I've done is kept the orientation the same of that hard disk and the SSD, taken off this little buffer thing, put it around the new SSD, and now I just need to slot the SSD back down into place where the hard disk previously sat. And there we go, I think that is done. I can now put the machine back together. So lay it back in the correct location and then go around as much as you can, firmly pressing around on the edge to clip it all back into place. And then we'll start screwing the screws back in. So I'll start with the uh, all the edge ones and basically do the reverse of what I did when I was undoing it. We're onto the CD drive screw, so we need to make sure we put the DVD drive or CD drive back in before we do that one. In the center here. And now onto the battery. So that goes that way around. There we go. And put those two screws in. That's now back together. Let's check that it switches on. I'm just going to quickly hide that magnet so I know where it is for the future. Get the laptop 
power adapter, which if you're interested, uh, is model number PA5178U-A, uh, sorry, dash one ACA. Uh, that looks like the only model number that's, uh, that's very obvious on there. So let's undo that, plug it into the mains. And try switching this on and I hope it works, which uh, I've got no reason to believe why I wouldn't. It's the power button again, I guess I didn't press it hard enough the first time. Uh, real time clock is low, and that's because it, this machine's been unplugged for quite some time. So I will need to set the date and time. A very good point, I don't actually know what it is. We are 11. Oh wow, can't type the numbers, or so keyboard's broken. Or, or it doesn't take keyboard input, which would be very awkward. And I'm going to get it uh, hopefully close enough. Whoop. Ooh, American date format. Ew. So can I do F10 for save and exit? Yeah, my keyboard does work, it just doesn't work for entry of uh, the time and date, which is particularly awkward, I'd say. And uh, there we have it, I think it's now in Windows, because I've just moved the hardware that that uh, SSD is on, it's going to do the getting devices ready process and um, and take a few minutes at that. But there we go, that's how you replace the, or upgrade the hard disk to an SSD in this Toshiba Satellite L50D-B-146. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notification switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much.